storm show. Hey, it's a storm show. So for the people that may not be familiar with Monty, I guarantee you, you have seen his face on Tyler Perry's Bruh. He's been on games people play. Um, I feel like he's been on a couple of like CB, uh, CBS shows, too. I just can't quite remember them at the moment. But you have seen this man, Monty Washington, actor, poet, motivational speaker, New York born, Arizona raised. And uh, we got we got some questions for you today. How you doing? I'm good, my man. How you living, brother? I'm good. I'm good. So are you you from New York or do you consider yourself from Arizona? Uh, I'm originally from Arizona. I spent like my uh, uh, a little bit of my childhood in New York, but Arizona is where I grew up most of the uh, most of my life. Phoenix, Arizona, to be exact. Now, you know what? I moved to Atlanta from Phoenix. What part were you from? Where? Oh, yeah. I was up in Glendale. Glendale. OK. I used to live in Chandler. So the opposite side. Chandler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chandler's nice. Chandler's a lot nicer than Glendale, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 here's the, well, I mean, Glendale got his good parts, too. You know, kind of yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But if I would ever move back, which I won't, but if I was to ever move back, um, Chandler would probably be the spot. It's nice out there. Nice, nice, nice. nice. So a lot of people might not, um, they might not know this about you, but tell us, a, well, I'll, I'll let you tell it, actually. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing, because I believe it was your upbringing and your story, which led you to be a motivational speaker today. Yeah, man. You know, I was uh, uh, my mother struggled with drugs early on. So, you know, I grew up in the hood, sleeping in crack houses, sleeping in parks, uh, literally living in poverty, so many homeless shelters. And <clears throat> eventually my mother's drug addiction got uh, so bad that me and my two younger brothers had to be taken out of her custody. And then I put us in group homes where we were in 12 different group, group homes over like three years. So it was constantly moving around and all that. Um, eventually got put into foster homes where some pretty messed up stuff happened. One foster mother hospitalized me. Another would lock me in a room for 23 hours a day, you know, constantly repeated, you're not, you're, you're dumb, you're stupid, you ain't shit. And so that sent me into depression. I tried to commit suicide on a couple of occasions. Um, you know, I got help therapy out there. Anybody out there on a side note, if you're going through anything heavily, like I heavily recommend you getting some help, whether that's seeing a psychiatrist, whether that's therapy, but like you gotta, you gotta go through that healing process. Like for real, it's gonna help you in every aspect of your life. So um, after going through all of that, you know, I was in special ed classes until eighth grade. But despite that, when I got in my last foster home, I was finally able to kind of, I guess, get my swag back, as they say. And uh, you know, went to high school, graduated one of the tops of my class. Went to college, got two college degrees, graduated magna cum laude. You know, uh -huh. wrote my own book. Um, uh, out here in LA pursuing my um, acting dream, started my own business, coaching and consulting business, Motivation um, Inc. Um, so yeah, we're doing some stuff, man. You know, humble, rough beginnings, but that's what makes you. You know, I say it all the time, like we don't look like our story. You know, like I could look at you, Storm, and I, I don't know what you went through growing up. I don't know, I don't know what led to you being the man you are today and coming to where you're at. We don't know that until you interact with somebody. And I say, we don't look like our story. And a lot of people think that our experiences and stories form us like, oh, my dad wasn't nothing. I'm going to be nothing. My family's from the hood. I'm going to stay in the hood. It's like, no. You don't have to be like that. Like, they don't. Your experiences don't form you. They inform you, right? Instead of being formed by those, how about you're informed? So I was informed about what it's like to get involved with drugs, to sell drugs. Uh, most of my family's in the correctional and uh, prison system. Like, as my name, West Coast, if I got... Uh, if I ever went to jail, thank God I never want to. But if ever I got, if I ever got locked up, I'd be good. I have so many of my family members part of the system. I'm taken care of if I go inside. That's sad. That's the legacy my family has right now, unfortunately. And that's what I'm trying to break. You know, we're trying to break those generational cycles. So, yeah, man, that's a little bit about me, my man. Well, let me let me say this. It's definitely um, it's a full circle moment for me in a way, because when I lived in Arizona, I actually worked for DCS. I don't know what they called it back when, you know, you were coming up, but I I had so many kids on my caseload. I would come in like after they had been taken and then I would help them into either the young adult program or just like reuniting them, whatever their their plan was. But. You know, I, I think about my kids from time to time and, you know, who they grew up to be and what they're doing. So it's it's a full circle moment for me, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But... Now, at what yeah, point did you transition point, into yeah, modeling, modeling and acting? And acting. Um, well, in college, man, you know, you come from the hood. You don't really, you aren't really told a to dream like that. Like, you either get into sports, 
which I started out in, you know, I was a, a basketball player, state champ, you know, I was a hooper on basketball scholarship. So if you black and you from the hood, typically it's like, you either gonna do sports or you gonna do music. Like if you if you're gonna do a non-traditional job, you either get funneled into sports or you get funneled into music. So for me, you know, I was a natural athlete, got into sports, and but I've always been an artist, you know, I was in plays and stuff in high school. You know, I'm a big man on campus, you know what I'm saying? State champ and all that, but I'm still doing plays and stuff. And I always kind of loved it. I realized um, in college that I'm more artist than I am athlete, you know? And it's, you know, accepting yourself. Like, yeah, you know, I got the build, you know, I'm six foot two, 210, you know, I got the build of an athlete, but in my heart of hearts, I'm an artist. So in college, you know, I started dabbling into that, you know, started writing plays, started performing in it. And I just found a love for it. And I took a public speaking class. My second degree was in uh, mass media communications. I took a public speaking class. And my teacher was like, Monty, stop playing. Because I didn't take it serious. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, let me get this easy A. And she's like, give us a speech that's authentic and honest. And I kind of did a little bit about my life story. And the response I got from everybody was like, whoa. And I always like motivational speaking. You know, I struggled with depression and anxiety for a long time. So... I always used to watch videos on YouTube, you know, of Les Brown or Tony Robbins, yeah. or, uh, Zig yeah. all these old, you know, all the old heads, all the OGs. And I just realized, I was like, yo, I want to do that. I want to use my story to impact other people. Boom. And then acting, I fell in love when I started writing plays and stuff with my, uh, my guy in college. And then once I got out, I was like, you know what? Am I going to go to law school and do this? I was going to like, I was going to go to law school start my own group homes or I was going to act. And I was just like, yo, I love it. I, I, I remember I was um, working at a, a group home facility and I was thinking, all right, yo, this is what I want to do. And I was about to get promoted to like two steps below the CEO because I worked, I come from that. So I identified and I connected with the young men uh, quite a bit. So I was really good at my job and I got promoted. And I was talking about, this is back in like 2011 where like making 50 racks was huge. And yeah. like, Phoenix, you already know, that's a lot of money, um, especially back then. And I got the promotion Friday. They said, Monday, I'm gonna start the new position. I packed up my car, moved to LA that weekend, man. I just, I left. Cause if I took it, I would have been too comfortable. I, I would have never left that, this this world, this entertainment business, it's too uncertain. It's, it's too grimy, it's too gritty. And it, it's hard to leave a comfortable situation. And you know Phoenix, you know what I'm saying? It's a it's not a it's not a hustle environment. You go there to start a family and you know it's it's not yes. it's not hard yes. to succeed there. You know what I'm saying? It's good if that's your vibe, but right. um, yeah, so right. I, I packed my stuff, moved to LA with a handful of cash, um, never looked back, had my struggles, you know, had to, uh, a year in, I was sleeping in a men's homeless shelter. And imagine that, you know what I'm saying? You got two college degrees and you sleeping in a homeless shelter after you grew up in that. So, um, you know, just going through that, hustling, grinding, you know, working jobs, asking for money, couch surfing, sleeping in the car, sleeping in homeless shelters. It's it's a grind to uh, pursue your dreams, you know, but it's, oh man, it's, it's worth it. I love it. I, I, I took a bet on myself and, you know, we winning right now. <laughs> And, and, and that's all that's all that matters is that you took a bet on yourself. I love how you said, you know, I had the position and, you know, I was comfortable and you could have you could have went on to run that company and start your own group or whatever. But you like, you know what? I'm going to go after my dreams. I also love how you said we don't look like what we've been through because somebody looking at you from the outside, me looking at your Instagram, I. People would think, oh, he has it all. He has the looks, he has the height, he has this, but they have no idea what you've been through and what you've fought to get through. You know, it's all here. So let me, because the people want to know, and I got to ask, how did you get connected with Tyler Perry? <laughs> uh, get connected, man. It's the, it's the, it's the hustle. It, as an actor, you go to a lot of auditions. Like, I auditioned for like seven different shows. So let me, let me say this, because... Anybody out there who's listening, who's an inspiring artist, actor, you know, performer, you got to understand, like, what's for you is going to be for you. Yes. And you got to use no as your vitamin. And just remember, like, no, it's not a never. It's a not yet. I auditioned for two months straight. No joke. Every Friday for a new role for one of Tyler Perry's new shows. Seven 
different auditions. And I felt like I killed 90% of them. You know, I, I hang my hat on my acting ability, you know? And I was like, nope, didn't get that. Damn, didn't get that. 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 I'm just like, yo. And then finally on my eighth one, I got the one I got now. I auditioned for a different role. We did the whole callback situation. Got to meet Tyler, all his execs and stuff up in Hollywood. Uh, did that. Had to wait for two weeks to hear something back. Had another round of auditions, mixing and matching. Did that. And then, you know, two days later, found out I got the part. And it was just, uh, I don't know, man. It was just uh, coming full circle because Tyler Perry was a little bit of my influence writing plays and Hi, in college, you know, there was nobody else doing it like he was at the time. I remember living in group homes, uh, living in group homes, some of the staff members would play some of his plays, you know, back on DVDs. Yes, y'all, DVDs exist. DVD, yo. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, people are like, oh, like a little Tyler Perry. So it's kind of funny that that's what kind of came full circle, but it was a hustle. You have, yo, you got to fight to get in this position. Looks ain't enough talent ain't enough it's it's a lot of the times it's excuse my language it's shit that's out of your control you either are right for that or you're not but if you bust your butt if you carry yourself professionally if you work on your skills and your talent and you don't perform at the edge of your ability that's what happened i wasn't right for the roles i auditioned for it's simple i see who got it like okay that person was better fit for for that role than me but I did so well because I show up on time. You know, I'm professional. I put in the work. You know, I come in ready, and I just keep doing it. So they just like, okay, we're going to find a spot. We're going to find a spot. We're going to find a spot. And then finally, when this opportunity with Brian they're like, yep, that's him. That's like, him. I, I He's Bill. Yep. Yeah, I was like, that's Bill. It was just like the look, the beard, the baldness, the vibe, the height, everything was like what they were looking for. And they already seen enough of me that, okay, I got the skills, you know what I'm saying, to be there. And yeah, man, now we're here. Now we got the third season, which is dropping May 12th, FYI. Third season dropping about May 12th. Uh, but yeah, we, it, it's, it's dope, man. It's dope working with them. It's, I love my cast and mates. We like a family. Um, that was our whole cast. We're a bunch of up and coming actors. Everybody's doing big things now. So that's a beautiful thing to see. But we're such a family and stuff and that bond and, you know, working at uh, TP Studios. It's just, it's dope, man. It's, it's a blessing. Now, let me ask you this, Monty, because it's really cool to see an ensemble cast of four males. You're seeing a brotherhood on television, uh, a black brotherhood at that, different types of black male personalities. You know, it's not you, you don't have to be the hood guy. You don't have to be the nerd. You, everything in between. Right. So I guess what I'm going to ask, um, just please, whatever y'all do, stick together so that the show can come to an official close. We don't want a girlfriend situation where at the end we get a shitty, we don't even get a series finale. We just like left on the table because somebody <laughs> want to leave at the end. Like just, yo, just complete hey, the story. Yo, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Y'all better email Tyler Perry. He, not, <laughs> he, he runs. He, he's the dude. He makes okay. all the decisions. Like he, He's possibly the hardest working man in Hollywood. So everything yeah. goes through him. Um, us as actors, we just show up and we do our job. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um, we, you know, we're still waiting to hear if we got a fourth season, but you know, we're just grateful to have these three season runs because a lot of shows don't really get that. Um, and of course, I mean, we hope it, we get this whole accumulation and this whole closing type thing, but that's like, that's rare. That's rare in Hollywood. Now the advantage we got is because it is Tyler Perry. It is his studios. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he does work uh, hand in hand with BET. Um, I'm sure if he wants it to continue, it'll continue. A lot of shows is predicated strictly on ratings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I hope we get that. You know, I hope we get a couple more seasons to rock out. I hope we continue to grow because um, it's been a ride, man. It's been it's been a ride. It's been fun. And like I said, I love working with my cast, man. We work so quick there. But the time we do link up, it's just the chemistry is real. Like the brotherhood you see. We all really cool like that. It, and it don't work like that. I've been working on other shows and stuff. And sometimes you just, you connect with people on set and then you go your separate ways and it's good. But that's the business. That's how it typically is. But exactly. what our group is special, everybody's really uh, close. Everybody's cool. There's love and respect. So, you know, hey, let's 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 keep it rolling. Let's get a few more seasons. You know, we can have fun, do what we love, secure the bag, all that. I love that. I love that. Now let's switch gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Well, a part of healing your traumas, a part of getting over anxiety, depression, all that stuff is really, it, I, I guess you could put it under the umbrella of self-improvement, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I see based on your social media, it looks like you're into maybe martial arts or something like that. Uh, yeah. For people who maybe their budget just isn't there, give them some tips on what they can do to improve their lives, like cheap things, you know, because everyone can't afford that. Oh, you know what? And this is what I say. Not everybody can afford to do those things. But at the same time, how can you afford not to? Oh, okay. This, I'm just being real. This ain't no sales technique or nothing. What I'm saying is some of us, we will make sure we got tickets to that J. Cole concert because that's what we value. We'll make sure we get the newest iPhone, even though our iPhone works perfectly because that's what we value. We'll make sure we get the hottest new J's soon as they drop because that's what we value. So if you don't value your personal development, your self-worth, your self-love, it's gonna be demonstrated in what you value. So I don't, it's not about having money to do stuff. It's not a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. You know what I mean? I, when I first started, I'm doing this martial arts here, I pay a personal trainer to do that, but guess what? I watch so much stuff on YouTube. I don't, it, it costs too much to train as avidly as I would like. Like I got the money, but you know what I'm saying? I'm about to start a family, you know what I mean? Like we try to buy a house and all that stuff. So I can't be shelling out three, $400 a month on nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I watch YouTube. I watch all this stuff. I pause, I screen record on my phone. I go to the gym, I play back slow because with the martial arts for me, it's first of all, it's hard as hell. And you know what I'm saying? Like I'm 35. So it's like, I'm learning that stuff right now in my life. And it's a challenge and it's beautiful because I'm out of my comfort zone, but also as an actor, I want to get into more action roles and action movies. So instead of sitting back on my laurels, be like, okay, I'm gonna wait. They can't always choose Michael B. Jordan. Like, you know, they got to give a brother a shot at some point. No, right. You got to be ready. So I've decided I don't have the credits or the clout for them to say, we want you for the role. Here's a year to prepare. No. Where I'm at in my career, I got to be honest, like I got my foot in the door, but I'm not a household name. So I got to come to the table already prepared. Like, oh, you need this? Guess what? I've been training this, 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 and this. I stay in the gym. I got the look. My acting is always on point. What you need? You got to understand that. So when it comes to people, we invest in what we value. So if you value yourself, you will invest. You will get a coach. You will go to seminars. You will go to conferences. You'll buy books. You'll invest in training. You'll invest in what you value. And if you value clothes and all that stuff, that's cool. Some people love to travel. Somebody's like, forget that. I don't want to do all that. I just want to travel. Whatever makes you happy. But when it comes to your mental health, protecting your mental health and raising your value and going on a self-love journey, it just depends on how much you want to invest, how much time, how much energy, how much attention. It's just like a relationship, right? You yes. can't have a good relationship if you don't invest in your relationship, if you don't put time, attention, and energy into it. It goes for the same with the relationship we have with ourselves. What are you doing for yourself? How are you investing in? How are you improving yourself? So it's not about you don't have, you can't afford it. How can you not? It's your life. It's your life. Hey, 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 listen. listen. <laughs> Monty said it, not me. So y'all can cuss him out in the comments. He said it, not me. <laughs> but speak, but, but you're absolutely right. Because, man, when I tell you the last, I want to say, couple years, the amount of money I spent on therapy, psychotherapy, um, a bunch of doggone books. I mean, they can kind of see them in the back here. Uh, personal training, just all all kinds of stuff. Uh, but it's for me, so it's worth it. So I, I don't. It's a lot. Like if you look at it, you'd be like, "You really spending that?" But I'm gonna spend it on bullshit anyway. So might as well. Um, but speaking of self love and self improvement, tell us about your seminars that you have coming up. Yeah, coming up. Okay, so um, this is just keeping it real, y'all. Uh, a lot of people, particularly a lot of men, um, the self-love space isn't a space that a lot of people go to. A lot of women do because, you know, our society has taught women to embrace the concept of love. But a lot of dudes and a lot of people in general, right, we were never taught how to love ourselves growing up. I don't remember. I meet very few people. In fact, I only have two people that come to mind that remember them, their parents teaching them specifically how to love themselves. We're taught how to love other people. And so what that does is 
it makes us believe that love has to come from an external source. We got to get love from God. We got to get love from family. We got to get love from significant others, friends and family. And that's all good. We love that love. But I say self-love is the best love. Reason why is take my situation. I grew up without that kind of love. My brothers were split up, so I didn't have brotherly love. I never knew my dad. That's not parenting love. My mother was addicted to drugs. My foster parents abused me. So it wasn't that love. I've been in toxic relationships where I dated somebody toxic or reverse. So that love isn't guaranteed. But the love you cultivate for yourself, that's the foundation of all other love. Because think about it. We ask people to love the hell out of us, right? To make us yeah. their priority. And yet we don't make ourselves a priority, right? We ask people to do all these things. I need you to love me. I need you to be there for me. You don't love you. You're not there for you. So we're asking people to give us something that we can already have for ourselves. Storm, let me tell you, fam, being loved by somebody who loves themselves hits different. So with, with, so with all that being said, I've been on my self-love journey for the last seven years because of the abuse I suffered in foster care, because of the depression I went through. My acting career would be a lot further along, even my basketball career, but I had low self-esteem. I had self-sabotaging tendencies. I was, I had, I suffered with imposter syndrome. You know what I mean? Wow. Because of all that abuse, I didn't love myself. When you try to commit suicide, that's the exact opposite, right? And I've been on this self-love journey for the last seven years, learning how to love myself in case I ever get to a point in my life where I'm not around anybody who loves me. And also, because the deeper you love yourself, the deeper you can love your spouse, your kids, your family. The deeper the connection you have with yourself, the deeper the connection with somebody else. So for the last seven months, uh, I've been working on this virtual self-love seminar. I'm in the process of writing my book on self-love. I'm going to go off to London for a month, and I'm about to just be writing, getting that in. But on May 22nd, um, Sunday, May 22nd, I'm going to have a three-hour virtual uh, self-love seminar. And I'm just taking everything I've learned from the last seven years and what I've been working on for the last seven months just to give people because I do coaching and stuff and nobody knows where to start on their self-love journey. People don't understand why they can't attract the right person, why they're in unhealthy relationships. Oftentimes, you're, you have unhealthy relationships with other people because the relationship with yourself is unhealthy. So, of course, you're going to reflect what's inside of you. So I True. developed this seminar um, just as a way to get people started on that self-love journey to start embracing it, to start acknowledging, you know, the part we play in our own suffering, how to get out of toxic relationships, how to start a self-love routine, how to get on your self-love journey, how to forgive, how to heal with intention, how to make intentional moves, like all these things that have taken me years, my man, it has been a journey. I cannot tell you how many lonely nights, crying nights, um, self-sabotaging, messing up opportunities, like it's been a lot. And now I'm finally at a point where I can unapologetically say, I love my black ass, bro. Like, I love me some me. I love where I'm at. You know, the self-doubt, the self-sabotaging. I've done so much to cultivate a, a, who I really am. Because the reality is, Storm, like, a lot of people, they don't know who they are. We're strangers to ourselves because we don't know who we are independent of other people. So who True. are you when you just are you? Most people don't know. So I'm just helping people on that journey. So May 22nd, it's going to be a virtual self-love seminar, three hours. It's going to be me i'm leading it i'm taking people through prompts we're breaking down some stuff i'm gonna talk about the self-love lies i'm gonna talk about toxic ten tendencies we have in ourselves you know everything i learned from therapy everything i learned from the damn near hundreds of books i've read and the classes and courses i've taken i'm putting it in a way that is easily digestible and people can understand and just getting people started on this self-love journey you know what i mean so um if you want any more information on that just hit me up on instagram at my motivation just DM me and say, hey, I'm interested and I can send you the link. Uh, it's not free, but it's incredibly affordable. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just worth it, man. It's my way of giving back. And I really want to occupy this self-love space because, like I said, self-love is the best love. When you begin to love yourself, your boundaries, your respect, your fearlessness, like the deeper you love yourself, the deeper you can love the people you love, man. Because self-love is literally about becoming the best version of yourself because the people you love deserve the best version of you. And that's all that it's about. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. I tell you what, this has been this has been a wonderful conversation. I didn't expect it to take this route, but I'm not mad at it at all. So just uh re to, to wrap up, reiterate again where the people can find you. 
All right, so quick little wrap. Y'all can find me. I'm most active on Instagram and TikTok, okay? My TikTok is live. I go live twice a day. In fact, I'm about to go live the moment we get off this interview. Um, so TikTok, it is motivation, M-O-N-T-I-V-A-T-I-O-N. You know, motivation, motivation. Y'all get it, right? <laughs> motivation underscore uh, on TikTok. That's the one with 100 followers. Apparently, I've been having a lot of people creating fake pages since I started <laughs> getting some stuff. So it's motivation wow. underscore. <laughs> Um, and then also on uh, Instagram, you can follow me on Motivation or my Monty Washington page. If you're interested in more of my acting endeavors, Monty Washington on Instagram. If you want more of the self-love, motivational speaking, that is Motivation. And um, bruh, Tyler Perry's bruh, season three drops on BET Plus May 12th. The first three episodes is coming out. So May 12th, uh, go ahead and hit that up. And if you're interested in a seminar, DM me May 22nd. We change your lives, my man. Uh, it's a storm show. Ay, it's a storm show.